this is part two of the 1982 uh, Gold 300SD and this starts off with some really dirty front suspension work and you're going to see all the front suspension is just covered in black and that is not engine oil. Um, these owners when they bought the car they requested the undercoating uh, so that's like that tarry undercoating that uh, is, is all over the suspension parts to prevent rust. Um, so it's super messy, but the good thing is uh, when you put it in the parts washer and just leave it overnight, all that stuff dissolves off and you're left with the original suspension components in outstanding condition. So the first part of this video is just some messy front end suspension work. I'll try to edit it where it's real quick, uh, but just hang in there towards the end of the video and you'll see what all the suspension looks like after I've cleaned it and I've prepped it and put in the new ball joints and brake control rod bushings and and got everything ready and clean to put back on the car oh and if you're if you're enjoying the channel please subscribe and hit the like button you guys are leaving a bunch of comments I'm answering all your comments and uh, it helps the YouTube algorithm uh, you know show my videos to more people if you do that so I appreciate it and enjoy the video all right I've got uh, all the nuts and cotter pins um, there's pieces of the cotter pins from all the control arm, um, tie rods and I just wanted to show here's a tie rod tool that you put it around the uh, the boot there and on the top and this will break it loose sometimes I have, to, I have to switch to the impact alright Get over here. Oh, there we go. See, it just popped loose. All right. Uh, what I did, I turned the steering a little bit, so it got it out of the way of the frame. It gives us some more clearance. So, let me go in here and hit this now. Man, that's a stubborn one. Ah, oh, there it goes. All right, let's go over here to the other side and see if this one's as stubborn as that other one. There we go. So those two are out. And then I can just unbolt the steering shock and I'll pop out these two tie rods and we've got the steering linkage out of the car. All right. There's the front steering linkage. Lasted a long time, but uh, it's time to get rid of that stuff. And uh, next I can start on the uh, brakes, springs, shocks, you know, repack the bushings. Actually, this ball joint over here is in excellent shape. The boot is not even ripped on it. But this one over here, yeah, that one's done. So I'm going to go ahead and replace both of it, just do a complete front end suspension overhaul. All right, the next thing I'm doing is removing the calipers. And pretty easy, just take the two bolts out. And with an extension, you can get up here to the top bolt. There we go. All right, so to get the grease covers off, I take a little hammer and you just stick a screwdriver there and you tap you know pretty firmly around all the edges and I'll set the phone down and actually do that and you will see there's how Mercedes holds those bearings in there this is what holds your wheel on pretty crazy huh and uh, man there's a ton of grease in there but here's the rotor went ahead and removed the dust shield um, and what I'm doing now, these are, this is the brake control rod bushing uh, housing. So to change that bushing, you got to get the housing out of here. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, cross member out of here. All right. So those are out. And this, nothing is holding this housing in except the brake control rod which goes to the control arm. 
So, there we go. I just popped that loose. Let me go ahead and get this one off. Alright, let's see if that one pops loose. There we go. There you go. That bushing slips into that. I think I actually have a housing. Oh, look at that. I have a housing right there too. So here's the housing that we actually just disconnected. And you can see this one has already has the brake control rod taken out, bushing taken out of it. But that's where that housing slides in there. Uh, the bushing slides in there. And then the control rod connects to that. So, alright guys, we're back at it. Um, I left off yesterday. I had to uh, pull the springs so I could get the brake control rod um, housing out and undo the upper control arm and lower control arm ball joints. So I've used a uh, spring compressor. There's the spring compressor. Here's the plates. You just pop those plates in there and the spring compressor goes down through there and then you turn the bolt and it will tighten the spring together. And I have that out. So the spring is out and I also popped loose the upper control arm. And these upper control arms, the boots are not broken and they're still in excellent condition. So I can't even move that one. Wow. There we go. I just got it to move. Yeah, those are still great condition. So I don't think it's necessary to change those. And wow, yeah, those bushings are in great condition too. They're not ripped, torn, cracked, nothing. And that boot, wipe that grease off there, that boot is still in outstanding condition. So I'm gonna leave those alone. Uh, see the ball joint? Yeah, that's loose. I'm gonna change that lower ball joint. All right, this is why I'm replacing the ball joint. Look at that, completely deteriorated. And it's uh, starting to rust inside there. Look how floppy it is. I showed this in some other videos, but this tool is OTC8149. Let me put that back up there. So here's what this tool looks like. Fits right there around the arm. Turn this out of the way. There we go. And so this screws apart like that. There's the press. There we go. And see that slips over the control arm. There we go. And then you run that down half inch. There we go. You should see that fall when it pops loose. Let me move my tools out of the way. There we go. Look at that ball joint. No good. I'll go ahead and take off the shock. That's a 10 millimeter there and one on the back. All right, I'm over here on the passenger side of the car. And you can see all we have here is the control arm that's left. Lower control arm and upper control arm. Now the ball joints and all the linkages, all that was bad down here. However, this, these upper control arms, I, I mean, I can't even, I can't, there we go, I got it to move. I can't even move, well, move these upper ball joints. These are, uh, these are in great condition. And the boots aren't ripped, and so are the sway bar bushings. So I'm gonna leave that alone. I'll clean it up. But uh, you can see we have the brake control rod bushing. Housing is removed. The brake control rod. The spring mounting perch. The brake control rod. Um, front connecting bushings that go right here. I'll replace those. The spindle, the shock, 
there's the bolts for the brake control rod housing and the dust shield and the rotors and bearings uh, and then of course down here there's all the front steering linkage I've inspected this and like these bushings are in outstanding condition they still have the little uh, little tabs from the factory like uh, you know like a tire you know when a tire is new it's got the little uh, little prongs that stick out from it it still has those on here and this is very good condition there's no flex no no play in that so that's very good uh, same goes with the uh, upper control arm bushings those are in outstanding condition so like I said those usually don't change until uh, extremely high mileage um, so there's no need to change those now with only 95,000 miles on the car anyway I'll get all new components we'll get all these cleaned up and get this reassembled and we'll have an outstanding condition front end suspension all right this is one of my favorite parts using the <laughs> Gray Mills Clean-O-Matic this parts washer found it from an old uh, machine shop and uh, man this thing gets things so clean you see all that grease on there look at that it just takes everything off the solvent in here is so strong um, some solvent I picked up at Tractor Supply and uh, it really does an amazing job. So a common place for uh, rust to start, a, start occurring on 123s and 126s is the battery tray. So tonight I went up there and inspected it and uh, actually removed the uh, battery. It's, it's right there. Uh, there's no rust under the battery tray. It looks good under there. Um, however, from years of, I guess, leaky batteries, or it could be... You know, someone was filling the washer tank and spilt uh, water down in there, but um, some surface rust has started. The good thing is, is it has not, it has not rusted through. Um, so I can easily sand this down and then uh, treat the rusted areas and repaint it and it'll be good for another 40 years. So it's good to see that this one uh, was in relatively good condition and it's not rusted through and I'm able to save it. All right guys, I finally got a tripod, so that's cool. Um, I don't even know if my head's in the picture because I got it zoomed in here, but you take this slug, put it on the ball joint, and it's important to have the spindle you want in the vise but the bottom of the spindle is also resting on the table. That way it doesn't sling out. Um, usually what happens when I do this, eventually it breaks loose. This falls down, it hits my hand, and I, I hurt myself. So I try to hit it without touching, without touching the, the spindle. And you just do that a few times. All right, there we go. It's starting to come out and see if I can show you. See how the ball joint has started to separate there? Those two hard hits will lodge it loose. Some are harder than others. And then you can tap it out the rest of the way. This one's being friendly. There we go. That's how you get a ball joint out. You have a little grooves there uh, that kind of bite into the ball joint. See the grooves that are left over? That's from the little grooves on the ball joint. All right, and then after that, I bring the uh, parts to the wash tank. There's no rubber parts on it anymore. The ball joint's out really lets you clean it real good so you can uh, repaint it the factory uh, semi-gloss that's what they use on suspension components Max volume. as far 
as uh, the bolts go, some of the bolts have the, uh, the cadmium or the, I think you call it chromate, that gold coating on them. And I like that. It looks really good. So these are the bolts that hold on the uh, dust shields. I mean, <laughs> you're never going to see these again. I don't know why I go to this length. But uh, I like to just put them in the parts washer. And if you just hit it, the parts washer in a cup for a minute. go. It cleans them up really nice. That's just one time through. So I'm going to put them in there, clean them up, because I like to get them uh, that golden color again. And I'll do a few coats. Alright, here's part two for the 1982 300SD. You can see it's up here on the lift and it has, let's see if I can get my camera to focus, it has no suspension anywhere. And for the last couple of days, I guess it took me a day and a half, I have totally cleaned and prepped the new suspension. I'm sorry, not the new suspension, the original Mercedes parts. So. I've actually started getting in some new parts. There's the steering shock, and there's the rear Bilstein shocks. They came in. Now, for the front shocks, here's the bump stops. These are the original ones from Mercedes, and they're in excellent condition. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them, so I'm going to reuse these. Um, the cross member, it's been cleaned up and painted. It's beautiful. Let's see if I can get this to focus a little better. Uh, then there's the battery tray. The battery tray, uh, it had a little surface rust on it, so I treated that and then repainted it. It wasn't rusted through. It's still totally solid. Um, one of the battery hold downs was still good, but this one had a little rust, so I'm going to get another one of these. Um, so there's the spring perches where the springs sit. These uh, have been cleaned up and painted. Um, there are the... And these came out incredible. These are the uh, brake guide rod or brake control rod housings. Um, and the bushings uh, are in here. And I'm, of course, putting new ball joints in the spindles. And look at this. I cleaned up all the hardware, and it still has the original cadmium plating on it. This is amazing. These are the bolts that slide down in the brake control rod housing and man that's gonna look fantastic that's what it looked like from Mercedes that's what it looked like when it came out of the showroom but uh, that car had some undercoating on it um, I guess to protect things the owners had some under so I've cleaned all the undercoating off and it did its job because that's the original finish it even protected all the bolts I've cleaned up all the original bolts and the cadmium plating is still there they came out really really nice um, these are the brake control rods here's the original um, tie rod arms um, these are really high quality these are the ones made by Mercedes the aftermarket ones and eh. if you get Mercedes they're pretty good but these are the originals so it's best to just get some tie rod ends and replace the ball joints for the tie rods but keep these originals and here are the shock covers from the original shocks. I've got these cleaned up. They cleaned up really nice. These are just plastic covers. These aren't cracked or damaged at all. So I'm going to use those. But man, look, that light looks absolutely beautiful how those cleaned up. So I've got a box load of new parts coming, bushings, shocks, center link, uh, all the front suspension stuff. That should be here probably tomorrow. And then I'm going to start reassembling all of this. There's actually one more thing I wanted to point out. So the rear shocks did come in. And here is the number. Um, let's see. It's a uh, 05111. That 24-005111. This is 
a little bit stiffer of a shock than what most aftermarket companies will tell you goes on this car because the ones that Bilstein recommends are too soft for the 300 SD. Um, so this is a little bit stiffer. I think they call it the touring shock. Um, but you definitely want to always use these on the front and rear. Otherwise, you'll get tons of body roll. And uh, I've used the other ones in SDs before, and I was really disappointed with the amount of body roll. And these still give an incredibly soft, comfortable ride, but they, they lessen that body roll because they're a little bit stiffer. So it's important to use those on the rear, and I'll, I'll do the part number for the front shocks also. Anyway, I'm really excited about this stuff. They just, all these parts came out amazing. I can't wait to see them back in the car. All right, guys, I got in a bunch of uh, stuff from FCP Euro. Good company for dealers. They had uh, no shipping uh, this past month. Um, there we go. We got the Mercedes uh, brand Centerlink uh, and the limb forder uh, tie rod ends. Um, and those fit great and work perfect with the original Mercedes tie rod sleeves. Here's the Bilstein shocks, and in the video yesterday I showed you the part number for uh, the Touring version of the shock, which is a little stiffer, and you definitely want to use those same uh, Touring shocks for the, for the fronts. I'll show you that part number. There we go. It's uh, 24-005012. That is a little bit stiffer shock for the front of the car. Uh, you don't want to use what most most of these vendors are selling as the uh, you know factory replacement shock for these 126s because they will not be stiff enough. Those are the ones that work. Um, let's see, you got the uh, limb forder uh, engine mounts. That's the good good brand right there. Let's see, limb forder ball joints. Um, Anyway, you guys know what a ball joint looks like. I'm not going to take it out of there. Uh, L-ring, uh, these are the wheel bearings. Got some replacement Bosch glow plugs. Here's all the replacement filters. Power steering filter. Uh, transmission filter. Oil filter. Fuel filter. Large and small pre-filter. Then the large air filter and a Mercedes uh, transmission pan gasket. So all this will allow me to go ahead and start on the uh, front end rebuild, which I'm going to do tonight. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and press in the ball joint. Here's the spindle and here's the ball joint tool. See it has a slot here and has a cup, cup on the bottom that a ball joint fits in perfectly. This is made for the Mercedes. Um, and then it's solid here so it can press in. So what you do, you rest the spindle on that cup, right like that. Now we place the ball joint. Try to get it Somewhat centered in there. There we go. And then this tool, you can slip it. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this ball of joint out a little bit to give me some more room. There we go. And this tool. You can slip right over the ball joint, and because it has the cutout here, see how it fits right around the control arm. All right, I'll get that lined up there, and I'm just going to make sure it's going in straight. That's the ball joint in the tool, and there's there we go. That's somewhat clear, and that little bitty gray line right down there, that's the 
little ridges or little teeth that grip into the control arm or into the spindle. So I'm going to go ahead and push this down. You can see those start to disappear as the ball joint goes in. And I just look to check that everything's going in straight. I mean, it really doesn't have any choice but to go in straight when you have a 20 ton press on it. If it's a little crooked, trust me, the press will straighten it out. And I just do little bitty pumps and take my time. I don't want to, because like I said, it's tons of pressure. See the gap is closing there. But you can't do these any other way than having some sort of tool like this. I can't imagine trying to do, use anything from like O'Reilly's or an auto parts store. You definitely need a press for this because it requires way too much force. All right, we should be right about there. All right, so I'm gonna loosen it now. And then slowly take this off so we don't drop everything. All right, we can see the boot is not ripped anywhere. We can see it's got, it was pressed in evenly. You can see it was pressed in evenly all around. And if we look underneath it, we can see it's pressed in even. One side doesn't stick out further than the other. And that ball joint is in there perfectly. And that's how you do ball joints. Now that the ball joints are in, I'm going to reattach these are the, uh, the little arms that the tie rods attach to. The tie rod uh, ball joint goes right here. And I had to remove this arm in order to fit the ball joint uh, in the press correctly, or fit the spindle in the press correctly. But put blue Loctite back on your bolts because that's exactly how Mercedes did it. And that's how we like to do things. I hit it just for a few seconds with the Ingersoll Rand air impact and that is more than enough torque. And yep, those are in there and that is seated well with blue Loctite. There we go. Those are ready to go back on the car. So I'm going to put a little bit of, just a little smidge of anti-seize on here before I thread these in fully. Uh, this prevents rust and corrosion and you can see there's already a little, little rust on the tip just from putting it in there one time. So let me grab some anti seize Keep in mind, these are held in with a little lock nut. So anti seize doesn't affect its holding power at all. And uh, this stuff goes a long way. A little goes a long way. So you can see I'm literally... That's it, man. That's all you need. And I'll just put a little on those threads there. So then when we thread it all in, anti seize will take care of the rest. Put a little on those threads. And that's a little goes a long way with this stuff. And it's messy as hell, so don't get it on you. There we go. And I'll show you what I mean by a little goes a long way. So when I start to thread that, it also makes things thread way smoother. See how smooth that's threading now? Let me show you what I mean by a little goes a long way. We just put a little bit on there on one side of the threads. And then watch what happens when I turn it back out. You will see that the threads are fully coated all the way down. See that? Okay, guys, this next video is going to show how put the brake control rod bushing into the housing and this is one of those uh, one of those methods when you're working on a car there's a few things on uh, the latest of suspension that are actually pretty brutal um, and this is one of them it's kind of barbaric how you do it but this is how you do it so first thing you would do you're going to get some grease and you want to grease up where the brake control rod bushing mounts 
uh, that'll do two things. It'll, it'll make it go in there easier, but it will also uh, make them come out easier. These are notorious for rusting or getting corrosion. Even though this is aluminum, they'll get corrosion and are really difficult to get out. So you lube that up real good. I think this is actually even how they say to do it in the service manual. So you get it lined up as best you can. Pretty straight. And then you just got to whack it in there until it... It gets somewhat, it gets centered. And it takes a few tries. I'll get it here in a second. Bam! I got it. So, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, see, you see the bushing, it has a it pinches together under pressure when you get it in there. See, it's finally now started on every side. So now it's just a matter of driving it home. And of course, I'm using a rubber mallet. It doesn't mess anything up. But there we go. That's how you get that in there. See how it's lined up flush but uh, those are a bitch to put in there sometimes like I said this one went in easy now I'll, I'll put those protective sleeves back on there but this one was a bitch so anyway there we go all right I just finished editing that video and everything you saw um, that took about two days probably like 11 hours or so I was a uh, uh, the shop guide say to do a front suspension rebuild it's about 11 hours well I spent about 11 hours just on disassembly uh, because of all the cleaning and prep work that I did to, to make this make this suspension back to what it looked like from the factory you know shops aren't gonna do this they're not gonna clean everything up they're just gonna bang it out bang in the bushings throw it back in there um, so I, I not only like the suspension to work correctly, I like it to look correctly because these are restored vehicles. So anyway, that's, that's all for today. Uh, part three is going to be, of course, reassembling all the new suspension components onto the vehicle. So anyway, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Um, I learn something every time I do this. So subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time.